Hey YouTube, so it's Wednesday morning again, and um, I was cutting a bunch of red oak for somebody yesterday, so I did nothing with my stuff, and I didn't get to make a video because I couldn't find the camera at the moment, I had it in the truck. So anyway, there's another new thing for today. Uh, what we got is, my neighbor brought this box over to me, and it's a bunch of blades. The name of the company is Timberwolf Bandsaw Blades. It says Sweetie Silicon and Cobalt Steel. Whatever, whatever. And there's the phone number. Now, I am not saying these blades are good. I'm not saying their blades are bad. What I'm saying is, he brought these over to me because he wants to cut. Um, back up here a second. He wants to cut a, a telephone pole and according to him these blades are meant to cut telephone poles. So I don't know that. I'm only telling you what I was told but we're gonna try them. Hopefully they'll fit the saw. I told them what size saw I had and uh, we'll go from there. They, they feel sharp, but they don't look like there's any kind of extra on the tooth. So I don't I don't know for sure if they're, you know, what's going on with them. Now I use the double hard blade on my saw, and I really like these blades because for one thing, they sharpen easy. And um, I've not bought more than one box of blades in the past, um, well maybe I bought a, yeah I think I bought two boxes of blades in the past four years. So I'm going to take this blade off here because today we're going to cut that telephone pole or a couple poles. We'll see what's going to happen. So this blade here that I have I've been cutting hemlock with but um, I had another blade on that I was cutting oak with yesterday. I took that off because it needs to be sharpened now. But anyway, I'm going to take this off and put the other one on. So just uh, hold on a second. <clears throat> okay, so let me wind this up a little bit so it's a little higher. And I'll take this blade off of here. This blade's been a good blade. Uh, I've sharpened it, sharpened it about six times already. And uh, I'll show you how the teeth on it are still nice. I mean, I know the blade's dull, but the thing is the teeth are still nice and high. I haven't cut very far back into the gullet there. Actually, it's pretty sharp yet. So for cutting hemlock, it'll still be good. But I do want to sharpen it. <coughs> All right, so I'm gonna put that blade that's over there in the box on here now. Like I say, I don't know if these blades are better or not. I think they're cheaper, and that's one of the reasons why you probably bought them, but that doesn't matter. My problem, or I don't know if it's a problem, but when I find something that works good, like the blades that I got from a wood miser, they work good, they sharpen nice by hand. 
I stick with that. I don't change what I'm doing. I like to stick with whatever I know works. Now, that's good for me as far as knowing what's going to happen and knowing what I, what I can do with something. The problem with it is that uh, you know, if you come up against something that you have to do that's sort of special, like cutting this pie, uh, telephone pole, you, you don't know exactly where you stand with it. So in other words, I know that those double hard blades from Woodmiser, they cut, I have cut everything I can possibly cut with them, and I've not had a problem. Now they do uh, wear down pretty quickly, probably three, four hours at the most, when I'm cutting a really hard wood. But cutting hemlock, I've been cutting hemlock the past couple videos that I made, and it doesn't seem to be affecting them at all. Well, it shows that it's adjusted good already. I'll show you that. Without doing anything to the blade, apparently it's the right length and all. Right here is what I go by. This head of this has to be at that orange washer. And you can see there that it is. Now it could be a little tighter possibly if I need it, but we'll see how it cuts. So anyway, I gotta go get the telephone pole. It's right at the neighbor that's across the road from me here, so it's not gonna take too long to do. And then we'll test out these blades and see what's going on. Uh, the problem also is I can make, I believe it's a 17 foot cut on this saw. The problem with it is that the blade, the uh, telephone pole is 20 foot long. So what we're going to do is cut down through the pole and then cut that off with a chainsaw when I get to the end and then move the saw and move the po a pole back up the bed to see if we can't finish cutting the rest of it. It shouldn't be hard, it should be an easy kind of fix, but we'll see what happens. Okay, for you guys that are just starting out, or you're buying a sawmill for the first time or whatever, there's a couple things you need to know. Number one, you need to be able to put the log onto the saw bed. Okay, onto the bunk. And that's not an easy chore. Now, if you're younger, you're in your 30s and 40s, you may be able to handle that somehow with rolling logs around. At my age, I can barely get the log to roll when it's laying on the bunk. So for me, I use the backhoe to pick everything up and set it on there. And I use the backhoe to grab the garbage that comes off, the flitches and all, to get rid of them because I don't want a whole pile of junk around here. It's bad enough I have what I do have, but um, I don't want all kinds of scrap. So anyway, uh, one of the things you have to know is besides buying the sawmill, you need to have something that can pick the logs up or whatever. Now, if you have some kind of a bunk built on the side of the sawmill, like over in this area, or the other side, it depends on how you want to work, um, it would be easier to roll the logs on there. So if you buy logs delivered to you and the guy who's bringing the logs can lay them on a bunk for you to roll onto the sawmill, then that's a good thing. Now, I didn't really want that because I wanted to be able to use tobacco for different reasons. Uh, one of the things is when I have a big log on there that I can't turn at all with a cant hook, I use the backhoe and a chain to roll the log because some of them are really hard to roll, especially if they're, you know, not a flat cylinder and it's got a little kink to it or a couple knots somewhere or whatever. So anyway, that's something that you do have to know. You got to know about the backhoe. Now my thing is, I had the backhoe long before I had the sawmill, so I was pretty much set up there. But the point is, is that you're running gas in the sawmill then. You're running gas and whatever else you use in your tractor. You know, this tractor is about 30 years old, so it uses a little bit of 
oil here and there. No motor oil. It's good on motor oil, but it uses hydraulic oil, and it probably actually loses it rather than use it. Um, steering power fluid loses a little bit of that. But if you want to, you can fix all that stuff up. I, it's so little that I'm not interested in fixing it at the moment. But I'm just saying, those are things that cost you a little money. You need a chainsaw. Now, I bought this small one, and I have other chainsaws, but I bought that small one because it's easy to carry, it's easy to start. And um, that's what I like about it. So there is some pretty much money invested into these things. Now, hopefully you have it, if you do have a tractor, you have it for doing other stuff. You don't want to buy a tractor just for sawing, unless you're going to saw every day and you're going to, you know, use the saw to move lumber and stuff, which is what I, or not the saw, but the tractor. That's what I use it for, to move the lumber. So, you know, it's up to you how you want to do stuff. You, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can do it a number of different ways. If you have the... Uh, the uh, sawmill down on the ground it's a lot easier to put a log on but it's not easier to work for me I like it the height I have because I don't have to bend over so far to work with everything so I'm about ready to go get the uh, um, pole and then we'll start to see how that's gonna work okay guys so we got the pole on there and we're just going to cut a flat spot through it. And then you can see how long it is on the bunk rail. So then we'll slide it down. You'll see what I'm doing as I go. yesterday was well I done some cutting but the thing is is this isn't hard but all, when I walk the dog that almost kills me yeah that's why I drove the truck down I'd be out of breath I would <laughs> I just tell me down and he'll run I hear you the first time I went to walk the truck I got up to the air and I had to stop and take a breather thing about it is when you know your whole life you were never lazy and yet you get to this age you got to become lazy yeah you know it's worse than lazy I was talking to Jack yesterday Jack did, he didn't even move off the bench when I talked to him and then when he went to get up it's and me too I went to get up off this bench oh my god I thought I was nailed to the bench you know So, and the other thing is now with the other three, we got to match the thickness. You mean the thickness of what's left? Okay, well, we'll do the best we can. Go from there. We can measure up from the bottom when we go to do that, you know?
that this ain't, this end ain't gonna be eight inches. But it's gonna be way wider. Yeah. Okay, now we gotta try and move this up there. We can probably do it with the back of it, but I think it'll slide. I'll tell you the truth.
bad. When you first said you wanted to put it on and then slide it, I thought to myself, man, that's going to be murder. But I was thinking a log. A log on there with the bark, bark. and knots. <laughs> Much harder. Trying to roll that is a nightmare. Yeah.
think that'll be pretty good. Yeah. At least you got something flat to work with. Yeah. Uh, what surprises me is that it got smaller. Yeah, I man. think there's maybe a little twitch in that. Maybe, maybe when they, maybe they're not perfectly tapered. They're not. So guys, what he's doing here with this is he's using these telephone poles for a foundation for a shed that he wants to build. It's a fairly big shed, so he needs something kind of heavy, and that should work good. So we're going to be picking this up and moving it and bringing another one back. Alright guys, this is the second one. So we're going to cut this next. My water was so bad last night that... Totally orange. You know what I was talking to that kid yesterday from down there with her husband? Yeah. He told me to run out of water every day. I don't know. Something happened. He thinks the well collapsed. He thinks the well collapsed? Yeah, which end do you want to cut that off of? The small end or the big end? It don't matter. Um, let's measure the other way on. See what we got. What do we have at that end of the rug? And the, and the back is, um, I talked to him for a few The minutes. reason that that thing, uh, I was thinking about that 11 inches. The reason that thing cut so close to the top is because we didn't raise it. If we would have raised the one end and then cut it, yeah. then it would have cut, cut more, more. one end. Um, this, this one here is pretty straight already, so you don't want to cut that. Right? Cut it I can still get the eight inches up here. Wanna cut it here? Yeah, fifteen. Fifteen. Because when I talked to him a couple days ago, he said he thought the water level, the aquifer dropped. I still got water. I don't know. Yeah, but I think you're deeper than But he was saying that. Muddy stuff or something. Tsunami. Orange mean, I'm mud. I'm about the same depth as he is, and don't you think? Or do you think? I think he's deep? higher up. I don't know how deep is. How deep are his wells? 160. My receipt says 200. I don't think that well. I don't think so either. Gotta get a new blade, guys, for this. Okay, I changed the blade, we cut that. Now we gotta move the pole down a little.
bit of a bend to it there.
I were to start over again, which I ain't gonna, I would buy a sawmill. The next thing after a circular saw. Honest to God, this thing has been such a help to me. You know? Yeah. Okay guys, so we're gonna cut two more yet, but basically that's what we've got going here. So now we just hit a nail. I just wanna show you this. We hit a nail and a little piece of metal. I will tell you that if I had one of my double hard blades on there, I'd be changing blades. But this is the piece of metal and there's a nail in the bottom there. So the blade cut good after that. So it's still good yet. Okay guys, we're on the third one. We just got to move the pole up a little bit. This is the short side of one. Ouch. Ouch. Well, this has got metal in it. Let's roll that so that's on the side more. Is it on the side right there? Yeah, right there it's on the side. Can you, just, can you slide it over a little bit against the thing? That's it.
is what happens when you hit something. The blade starts diving. Yeah, it's doing all kind of things. It should probably change. The or is the blade loose? No, the blade's not loose. It probably needs another blade, though. Yeah. You want to try and cut the skim that off of there. The problem is I'm going to have to go down two inches up there. Why? To make that straight because I'm two inches off the... Let me just show you here. You go from one to the other. Oh, I'm about an inch off here. An yeah, inch I know. High. An so, inch high. I'm an inch low. The cut's an inch low. Let's push this off. Sorry. So guys, just to give you an idea, hitting the nail on that with that blade, if you look across the log, you can see there's a major dip in there. It's actually one inches down, right, right between here and up here. This is the last one here. I'll show you what this wood looks like inside. It's yellow pine, and it's pretty nice looking, the grain in it. Real nice. All telephone poles have to be strong. So this is the last one for today, guys. That'll be it when we're done with this. Have a good one. You can see how nice the end grain is on these uh, yellow pine logs here. No knots in these or anything. Beautiful. That's the flitches. Now, I know that a lot of you younger guys are probably thinking, boy, these guys are slow or these guys are going slow or whatever. Believe me. When I was in my 30s, 40s, and 50s, we put out as much work as anybody else would put out, if not more. And now, I don't know, once I hit 65, it really beat me up. So it kind of slows, slows you down. But at least we did good on what we 
did do. We, we don't have to, you know, do anything twice, which is good. So I'll have to get this cleaned up and all. All I'm saying is, besides what I said at the beginning of the vi video, excuse me, with the, um, or somewhere in the video with the cost of things, it's not just the cost anymore. It's the, you know, the time that you're working. If, if after you're in your 60s and 70s, if you can put a day's work in doing this, you're in good shape in my mind. So, anyway guys, like I said, have a good one. We need to get rid of this stuff here. He wants to cut some boards out of those, which is okay. And uh, that'll be the end of that then.